All right, folks, now I want to show you guys how to put together uh, and control uh, one of these guys. This is a DC motor, um, and it's this is a small toy DC motor, uh, perfect for uh, getting powered off one of these Arduinos. Um, and just like the LED was a type of output that took elect elect electric energy and converted that into light, a uh, DC motor will take that electric energy and convert that into uh, mechanical uh, kinetic motion. And so we can do a lot of the similar things with this DC motor like we did with the LED. Um, here, if I hook this up directly to the 5 volt output, there we go, let me actually get the right pin. Uh, so I got 5 volts coming to one side of the motor. You can see the motor's spinning, uh, and the other side of the motor is connected to ground. Um, that's just going to spin the motor. Um, and I just attached a piece of tape to the end of the motor shaft so you guys can see it spinning a little more visibly. Um, but that's a you know pretty simple way of uh, getting things moving. Um, the only problem here, of course, just like the LED, is I've got no control over this. I mean, I can you know physically plug and unplug the uh, uh, wires connected to the motor, uh, but I can't actually control what's going on using the Arduino. Uh, so. That's where the code comes in, of course. Uh, and so I've got some code pulled up here. And uh, if you're paying attention, this looks pretty familiar. Uh, in fact, it is almost exactly the same code uh, that we use to turn the LED on and off. Uh, except in this case, I've changed the variable name for the pin from LED pin to motor pin, uh, still connected to pin 13. Um, here we got the pin mode. Uh, we're setting that to an output because we want to send an electric signal to the motor. And we're still using the digital right here to turn the motor on and off. And so if instead of connecting this uh, high voltage red wire to 5 volts, if I connect this to uh, pin 13, the motor will essentially run the blink program. It'll turn on, turn off, turn on, turn off, um, until I disconnect the power from the board uh, at intervals of one second. So that's nice. Um, that gives us some control over... Uh, the motor itself, I want to show you how to have the most control over the motor possible. Um, and for these small motors, it's fine to power these off the board, um, but what if I want to use a 12 volt motor? The Arduino can't supply 12 volts, I need to hook this wire right here up to a 12 volt battery um, and still use the Arduino to control the motor, I'm going to have to use a few more bits of electronics. So I'm going to slightly modify my circuit, you can find the schematic in the assignment, um, I'm going to use one of these guys. This is called a transistor. Uh, you'll notice it's got one flat side uh, and one round side. Now the middle pin of a transistor is typically referred to as the base. Um, the right To the right of the middle pin is called the collector and to the left is called the emitter. And this will let um, me control the flow of electricity from the collector to the emitter by applying a small uh, current to the middle pin. Um, so this is a type of switch or valve for electricity. Um, I can control how much electricity can flow across uh, the outside two pins by applying electricity to the middle pin. So I'm going to slightly modify my circuit. I'm going to disconnect um, the ground wire. I'm going to insert this uh, this transistor like this. I've got the flat side facing uh, that direction because the collector is on uh, the top side here. Uh, it's easy to get these switched around. That flat side kind of tells you which side's which. Um, so if it doesn't work at first, um, you may try you know, switching your transistor and you might have it in there backwards. I'm gonna collect, uh, connect my ground pin uh, to what's called the emitter of the transistor. Um, the collector of the transistor Transistor is going to be connected to the motor wire, which is again connected back up here to my high voltage. So I'm going to connect this back to the 5 volt pin. And so I should have 5 volts um, pumping current through the motor and through this transistor. But uh, this transistor won't do anything unless I apply a small electrical signal to the base, to the middle pin. And to do that, I'm going to use a, uh, a resistor. I'm going to connect this resistor to the same row on the breadboard that's connected to the middle pin of the transistor. 
So in this case, I'm using a 2.2 kilo ohm red, red, red resistor. Uh, it's paired pretty well with uh, the transistors that we have in our Arduino circuit kits. And then I'm going to use, connect this other end of that resistor to pin 13. And you'll see it'll do pretty much the same thing. Uh, pin 13 is t uh, sending a high and low voltage signal to my uh, middle pin of my transistor. Uh, which is allowing current to flow at that same interval through the motor. I'm going to add one more safety feature. Um, I'm going to add one of these guys. It's called a diode. Um, this is a non-light emitting diode. You'll see it's just got one bar on the side of it. And I'm going to connect that going across the wires that are um, going to my motor. This is something called a flyback diode. Um, and what it'll do is it'll prevent current from flowing backwards and potentially damaging my board. Um, not a common occurrence with this type of electronics, but a good safety feature to have in there. So that's my circuit. Um, but if we want to make the circuit a little bit smarter, um, we can actually send an analog signal to this motor. So we can actually control how fast the motor is spinning. So I'm going to disconnect this yellow pin. And I'm going to change this. I'm going to connect this to one of the pulse width modulation pins. You'll see it says PMW. Um, those are the pins with the little squiggle, the tilde next to them. Um, and these are pins that can simulate a analog signal, which can take a range of values. Instead of just high and low voltage, um, we can set a range of values. I do have to make a few changes to my code. Um, obviously, i got to change the motor pin from pin 13 to pin 9. So make sure you make that change. And instead of a digital write, I'm going to do what's called an analog write. And so if you spell things correctly, obviously it'll highlight your uh, function in orange. Um, that indicates it's a recognized function. Um, and what this analog write will do is let me set a range of values between low and high voltage. Uh, so low voltage is going to correspond to zero. High voltage is going to correspond to 255. Um, so that's just a range of indexes uh, values between zero and high voltage. Um, if I upload this to my code, it's not going to do anything different um, if I upload this to my Arduino because 255 is still high voltage. Uh, for those of you who have done like a little bit of electronics and stuff, you probably recognize that this is 256 uh, different numbers, um, which corresponds to 8 bits. Yay. I'm going to check my port to make sure that's connected. There we go. Um, and the motor's doing the same thing. Um, but with this analog write, I can set a different value. If I don't want you know, this to run at high voltage, if I want to, this motor should have to run at maybe half speed. I might try a value of like 128, so something smaller than 255, that's still between 0 and 255. Let's try that. Yeah, yeah, we already did this little Arduino. There we go. And I don't know if you can hear or see it, um, but it is spinning considerably slower than it was before. Um, and you might play around with this and see how low you can set this uh, before the motor starts spinning. There will be a dead zone where you're still sending a small voltage to the motor. Yeah, now it's barely spinning. Where you're still, still sending a small voltage to the motor, uh, but it can just barely uh, turn it on. So, uh, again, the nice thing about this is that this is the voltage I'm using to power this motor is completely independent of the Arduino itself. Um, I could connect this to a 12 volt power source if I had a bigger motor. I could connect this to a 36 volt power source if I was trying to power an electric scooter motor and still use this transistor or this type of transistor device to control the speed of that motor regardless of what uh, power source I have this connected to. Um, so you'll see this used a lot in robotics, a lot in um, electric motors, um, any type of electronics that uses bigger motors. Uh, but this is pretty much everything you need to know right now about getting the motor running. Uh, good luck.